<laughs> I need to want to hear that theme song again. Hello, another uh, crazy video from the Anger Photographer, but uh, not going to be talking crazy. We're going to be talking serious. A bunch of people have wanted me to uh, make this video for obvious and logical reasons, of course. And then the question becomes, of Nikon's current production only lenses, what are the ones that set themselves out as superlative, no ifs, ands, or buts, not saying to purchase, but set themselves, there was a certain long list of criteria and I made it empirical criteria and I made sure that I eliminated any subjective preference. These have to be divinely utilitarian. They have to be divinely outstanding examples of the lens manufacturing art, be it from uh, Nikon or otherwise. They have to be sharp, fast, stunning, standalone, rise above the crowd examples above everything else in the Nikon line. Now right now, this is part one, this is the FX series of lenses. I am meant to only include 10 at the most. Next video will be a DX series, of which there will be very few lenses. Um, I meant to include only 10, but uh, I included 12 and I very begrudgingly added a 13, a 13th lens. So. Um, now this is about price be damned, and I am obviously, I do have the 135 F2 Nikkor back there, and uh, obviously I've been pushing the no longer made 135 2.8 or 3.5 Nikkor, which as I made a video on is sharper and is a far better purchase, but this is about current production only Nikon lenses, and as you know, stuff that isn't made any longer may or may not be available. I still forward those lenses as what to get, but where price may or may not be an object, and we're talking about Nikon's current production, then this is the list that I narrowed down as having, sub, uh, having uh, objective criteria of being divinely utilitarian, just stunning and outstanding rise above examples, fast, sharp, and uh, price be damned. Of course, obviously my videos are about saving money, not about spending money, but uh, a lot of people asked me to make this video, and uh, here it is, and this is the FX series part one. So, why were these chosen? All current production lenses I either own or have owned or have used, um, including the real expensive uh, tellies, real expensive tele primes. And uh, here we have 13 lenses. The only one that I would have cut from this, I originally wanted to make it uh, 10, and then I had to increase it, to be perfectly honest, to 12, but I only begrudgingly, and if I were to remove one here and make it a dozen, it would be the 24 to 70 to 8 lens sitting on the Nikon D810 over here. Why would that be removed? It is not exactly an extremely sharp lens. It is a fragile beast. She's delicate. Um, she can be replaced with several other lenses. However, she is a stunning example in her own right in that she's a 24-70 mid-range zoom uh, lens in the Nikkor line uh, with a full aperture of 2.8. You know, thousands of pros use this lens seemingly exclusively and a lot of them actually have two of these and of course you know, $1,900 is nothing if you could justify it, you know, as a wedding photographer or or a newsie or something else, I mean that's really nothing. And of course you know you have insurance on it, who cares if you break it, you go out and get yourself another one. So, cost be damned, I had to pick out objectively these stunning examples in the FX line. Over here we have the 14-24 to and 2.8 of which there is absolutely no equal of all the lenses that are here. There's nothing by any manufacturer that comes anything close to the 14-24 to 2.8. She's superlative. I've made other videos about it. You know, there's just no question about what it is. Why did the 18 to 35 G lens beat out the 16 with uh, f/4 or with vibration reduction? The reason being is that she's superlative. She's lightweight. She's far more utilitarian. Cost be damned. You know, we're talking about $700 versus $1,200 roughly on the 16 at f4 with vibration reduction. You don't really need it on a wide zoom. The uh, superlative example here and why the 18 to 35 had to be included over the 16 
uh, is uh, rather obvious, as I've stated in the prior video. Uh, going on to some of our primes over here, um, we have the 135 DC. Um, DC be damned, uh, she's a stunning example. That lens is patented, it can't be duplicated by anybody. I do obviously, of course, recommend the 135 2.8 or the 135. 35 over this $1,300 lens. However, we're talking about current production only, so don't, you know, scream and cry that, well, you know, I bought that wonderful lens in your recommendation. Why are you recommending this expensive lens? I'm not. I'm talking about what Nikon is currently producing that is wonderful and stands out as exquisite above everything else, um, has extremely uh, incredible build, not worried about chromatic aberration, distortion, you know, they are just stunning examples of what Nikon produces. And there is a broad FX line. You know, we're looking at, you know, a handful of lenses. Well, this is more than a handful of lenses, but compared to the entire FX spectrum, this is narrowed down a lot. And I had to do a lot of thinking about this. This wasn't done at the spur of the moment. Um, secondly, the newer version looks slightly different, but is the exact same lens. It is the 180mm 2.8 Prime. Still at current production. Excellent. Exquisite. As I've told you before, there are uh, equal examples, such as the AI 200mm f4 and other examples, but as far as current production, the 180mm 2.8 stands as exquisite, built like a tank, built in lens hood, just an excellent, excellent lens. Okay, out of these 13, additionally, the reason that the 50mm uh, 1.8 wins out over the 1.4 is that at her full aperture, 1.8 millimeter f4 forgetting about price and the fact that this is essentially one-third the price of the 50 millimeter 1.4 the uh, 50 millimeter 1.8 D lens current production Nikon lens is the best little tank little indestructible beast she's uh, exquisitely sharp you know exquisite lack of distortion all the way open unlike the 1.4 um, she's tougher. She's been there have been a billion of them made, not literally, but I mean there has been endless endless numbers of them made. And she stands as an exquisite example. The uh, 20 millimeter non D version is built like a tank. The 20 millimeter prime Nikkor 2.8 stands as a stunning example. All of these are primes that we have here. All of these, right through the center section. Going over here, we have why. Now, there is no, as I made before, nothing will actually evoke more anger in people than talking about uh, fat glass telephotos. Talk about fat glass, we mean big, heavy ass lenses. The reason that the 80 to 200 wins out is not because of her price, although she does, in practicality, of course, for most people, but price be damned, as far as their current production, why does this 80 to 200 win out over her expensive sister, which is $2,400, versus this one, which is $1,200? Two reasons. Far, far, far tougher build of a lens. Um, she is sharper. She has less glass. Um, she's built like a tank. No, she does not have vibration reduction. However, none of us were bitching back in photography school and onwards for 20 years due to the non-existence of vibration reduction. Any pro worth their salt knows how to properly use a 70 to 200 or an 80 to 200. The reason this lens has been made for so damn long and is still made is because it stands out head and shoulders as an exquisite divine example of a pure solid tank and beast of a lens. She is incredible. She squeaks out her her sister, which is twice the cost, and cost be damned. The reason she squeaks out the 70 to 200 is that she is tougher and she is sharper. And there is an, there is an exquisite reason why Nikon is still making this old girl. A very exquisite reason. It's the reason why she's sitting on this table with the rest of these current production FX lenses. Now, two zooms, well three zooms, but two mid-range zooms and one super zoom. Uh, mid-range zoom, Nikon's sharpest mid-range zoom, the 24-85 to VR. 
Uh, three of these lenses, they're absolutely exquisite. It used to be a D610 kit, kit lens. She's exquisite, she's built like a tank, she has vibration reduction, she is as sharp as hell, and just a wonderful pack around, go everywhere lens. She stands head and shoulders in her category amongst other mid-range zooms. And like I told you before, the one lens that I remove here to make it a dozen instead of 13 would be, and shockingly to some people, would be the 24 to 70. If I make this 13, you know, 12 lenses instead of 13, the removal would be the 24 to 70 2.8 sitting on the D810 here currently. Two remaining lenses. Exquisite, super fast, super quiet, stunning. People see this lens and what they do is they harken back via their memories to older shitty 70 to 200s or 70 to 300 lenses. Even though she looks the same geometrically and in her shape and figure, the 70 to 300 VR Nikon ED lens for FX and works perfectly well on a, on a DX camera. Obviously, you have to consider a crop factor. It is a 70 to 300 4556 ED VR Nikkor. Exquisite. Um, extremely exquisite. Um, fast, quiet. Um, she actually stuns most people when she, they actually try them for the first time. And oddly enough, to include it here, and I kind of had to, the 28 to 300 to Super Zoom. Uh, Nick War, she is VR and uh, she covers from 28 to 300 and unlike most super zooms that have serious distortion issues uh, either far or near and their focal range the 28 to 300 is pulled off excellently by Nikon and amongst all other super zooms made in the past well 20 years basically she is a stunning example of optical perfection. Of course, she's not perfect, but she is, as far as a super zoom, which is optically hard to design without serious distortion or focus or sharpness issues. She is a stunning, exquisite example that had to be included here, so that is why the 28 to 300 is included. So, of the entire broad spectrum of many, many, uh, Nikkor uh, FX lenses, all of which I either own or have owned or have used without question, not only current production but going back many, many years. These are the 13 that are included in the FX series. And I thought long about and hard about this, and I had to include and think about the empirical criteria for why I would include these lenses. And I had to think about many different factors their utilitarian usefulness how exquisitely they're constructed, constructed, chromatic aberration, distortion, their sharpness. They had to be stunning examples among other lenses that are either the same focal length or very close. So they had to be sharp, sharp and fast and stunning and they really had to rise above the else. And remember this particular video is not about price and it's not about best recommendation. It is about price be damned and current production only. Okay? Obviously, I've recommended to you, and I'm all this, you know, the premise of this entire video series that I made was about saving you money. But some people out there, well, you know, I can't find this lens you keep recommending because everybody in their nuts is out trying to hunt it down right now because, you know, you recommended it and all these people have been buying like this 135 2.8 and they're just tickled pink, and all of a sudden there's been like a global rush on some of these older manual focus lenses. But, as far as stuff that can be had regardless right now, you know, B&H carries it at a rum or whatever, and you don't have an issue, say someone out there is a photographer or they're advanced amateur, and money isn't a concern, they still have an issue, and it's like, well, you know, okay, fine, those are some of the older manual lens AI lenses, I don't necessarily like auto uh, manual focus, you know, what currently in Nikon's line um, are... Uh, you know, do you recommend? The two lenses that I have yet to get to, that I have uh, meant to get to, as I actually scrolled from left to right. Here we have, I've got six different examples of 85mm. And we're going to talk about the two last lenses in this 13 series, 13 uh, lens series of FX uh, lenses. Is the 85mm G. She is optically a bit superior to her D cousin. Now, I do recommend her the 1.8 over the 1.4 because uh, um, I do not recommend spending that money. This is about price be damned. I do not recommend at all spending a fortune, even though I own one, an 85mm 1.4. 
The top recommended FX 85mm lens would be the 85mm 1.8G. There's nobody that's griped or complained about this not being fast enough. She is a bit optically superior to her D cousins. Um, I think, I know I have, I've owned every version of 85mm in the past 35 years and still own six 85mm lenses. So the 85mm G is the current superlative, exquisite example of what I recommend on owning. And lastly in this 13 uh, lens uh, video would be uh, the Swiss Army knife of Nikkor lenses. Perfect for FX or DX and that is the 60mm micro Nikkor. She's a perfect reproduction lens. She's a great portrait lens on DX with her crap factor. She's an exquisite normal lens. Handy, useful, wonderful sharp ass prime. She is built like a tank. I do only recommend the D version and this is still a current production lens. She stands head and shoulders above everything else close to her. And there is no other micro Nikkor that I recommend other than her. Um, the next uh, micro Nikkor that I would have recommended would have been uh, in the 100 series but uh, I recommended the Keen over it and it does not stand out as a shining example either of build or of ruggedness or of durability so I cannot recommend any of Nikon's uh, macro lenses other than the 60 millimeter now if you think that's subjective fine whatever you think that's perfectly fine but uh, use them all and uh, the one place where Nikon fails unfortunately is in uh, some of their uh, not only extremely overly high priced uh, macro line but also underwhelmingly poorly constructed as far as a feeble uh, construction and uh, just just not that superlative however the 60 millimeter is a stunning exception to that and that's why it must be included in this 13 lens series so here we have the 14 to 24 the 18 to 35 and barely squeaking in and the first to be left out would be the 24 to 72 8 and we have the 135 f2 the wonderful wonderful 180 millimeter 2.8 prime the 85mm 1.8G lens, the 60mm D-series 2.8 macro Nikkor, although for Nikon it's uh, micro. 20mm non-D, 20mm prime. Now the 50mm 1.8 squeaks out her 1.2 and her 1.4 cousins. She squeaks out not only in her construction but the fact that you don't have to worry about distortion or issues all the way open. Um, not to mention cost, this video, uh, this uh, specific video is not about cost, but uh, also she is uh, infinitely less expensive and uh, you know if you have to buy 1.4 and stop it down to 1.8 to get perfect shots then why not spend a third as much and get the 1.8. So she does unquestionably be at her 1.4 and 1.2 cousins. Unquestionably, the 24 to 85 superlative, sharp as hell, vibration reduction, just exquisite mid range zoom lens. The super zoom 28 to 300 Nikon has pulled off the best exquisite super zoom, which is very, very tough optically to do so. The 70 to 300, 4556, five, only get the VR version, current production version. Um, super fast, super quiet. Every person that uh, buys one, uh, off this recommendation so far you know as expected would be the case has been incredibly stunned and lastly over here the 80 to 200 to 2.8 she stands out superior to her uh, much more expensive cousin the 70 to 200 VR2 because she is tougher and she is sharper you're thinking well she's only 80 to 200 and she doesn't have vibration reduction so what she stands out and she is a better example and that is the very reason why Nikon is producing this old girl for so long. A lot of people think this lens isn't even made anymore but no it's still a current production lens and for many damn good reasons why. The pros know why she's fucking awesome and she is fucking awesome. <laughs> Excuse my language. There is no perfect 70 to 80 to 200. The Tamron for example uh, is faster it's quieter. It's a bit sharper than even the uh, the uh, than the uh, Nikon uh, 70 to 200 VR2. Uh, this one is the best optically of the three. So no, there is no perfect 
70 or 80 to 200 that covers all the bases. Vibration, best vibration reduction, most fast and most sharp. This old girl is the toughest, undoubtedly. Regardless of what you think, she is unquestionably empirically the toughest bitch out there. And, between the two, her other cousins, the Tamron 70 to 200 VR, uh, 70 to 200 2.8 uh, VC lens, and the 70 to 200 uh, VR2 lens, she is the sharpest of the two. So she's the toughest, and she's the sharpest. Now the other ones have vibration reduction, and they are faster focus. But she still beats them out because there is no perfect 70 to 200. It's like you have to own three different lenses to get everything because there is no 70 or 80 to 200 that has it all. And that's why there's so much infighting. Nothing will piss off all these photographers quicker than talking about, well, what's the best 70 to 200? You know, and maybe it's the 8. They all get angry because no specific lens embodies every perfect characteristics and that isn't my opinion it's a hardcore fact i mean it, it is just the case maybe someday in the future they'll make one that embodies all of that but nobody's beat this bitch yet because she's a sherman tank and also she's got less glass in her and she's a lot damn sharper so these are the current production fx nikors that are recommended said so the first one that I would have left out would have been the 24 uh, to 70 2.8 because she is fragile she's not extremely sharp but uh, she is incredibly handy and useful she has her own purpose I mean she's you know she's uh, you know the ugly fast girl that uh, nobody likes to look at but uh, everybody wants working for them you know reliable um, fast kind of a bad analogy really but <laughs> Um, she only barely squeaks in. So of the entire FX Nikkor line, this is it. And I said, I, may, I set forth a bunch of objective criteria, and I tried to squeak in only 10, but I was forced to squeak in at 12 lenses, and very, very begrudgingly had to, kind of, include the 24 to 70. But really, this is a 12 series recommendation on the only FX uh, series that stand as superlatives above the crowd, above the fray, you know, head and shoulders above their brothers and sisters, either close or in the same focal range. And, uh, you know, a lot of you have been ma asking me to make this video. They say, okay, okay, what about all these great AI manual focus? What about current production? What is it that is just outstanding? And that is what the premise of this video is for. Stay, to stay tuned for part two of this series, which will be about uh, the DX series of the same criteria. And, of course, there are a lot fewer lenses than 13 in that series. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two. Or tell me to go screw myself, whichever makes you happy. This has been another video from the Angry Photographer. It wasn't very angry in this video, but, you know, I had to work hard and... Well, maybe not work that hard, but I mean, I had to think and make sure that I was actually making something that I would not regret as far as picking these out. And I used, you know, it's like the army setting out special people for the special forces instead of the regular marines is like you know only the top of the pot top are going to make it to the navy seals and these are basically the navy seal lenses of nikon's marines but however nikon does have some cross-eyed duds not all nikkor lenses are marines some of them are actually duds and rejects that are current manufacturer but these are the navy seals that made the cut above the cut above the cut of everything else that's out there on the fx line and of this i will stand firm and fast and there is no reciprocating on my part in the future or an apology on any particular lens of this i made absolutely certain and made it sure that it was an extremely well thought out uh, series and uh, I'm glad to bring this to you because there's nothing else out there like this on YouTube where someone has actually owned or does own you know all the inter all the entire current series of uh, Nikkor lenses and uh, can give you you know a broad spectrum of experience so that you don't piss your money away unnecessarily which is so easy to do on optical um, gear uh, when it comes to photography. So I'm glad to bring you this series because a lot of you have requested it and here it is. So thank you so much for watching. You can drop me a buck or two or send me a comment or 
whatever toots your horn and uh, be more videos to come from the angry photographer I'll be a little bit more angry later when I've had some coffee in my system right now I'm kinda tame and mellow so thanks for watching catch you later alright